cable TV is dead, but streaming sucks. Let's have a conversation about why the streaming services suck and why it's partially Zack Snyder's fault. All right, let me reframe that because <laughs> that's giving Zack Snyder way too much credit. Way too much credit. So what I really want to talk about is, and this has been an idea that's been kicking around for a long time now. People have been saying that streaming, the shows that are on streaming kind of suck. Now, this is not 100% true, uh, but there are some disadvantages. And what I want to do is go through it and articulate some of the reasons that I'm sure you've even, you've even been thinking of because... This is something that's really just kind of permeated as uh, reviewers and, and fans of things. One of the big reasons that I look at is that it takes a long time for these streaming shows to bring in the next season. And a lot of it is based on their data and how much, like how many minutes are watched and all that and what kind of commitment they have into it. Because what you got to remember is when you make a first season, it's very expensive to build everything. When you have a second season, well, you already have a lot of existing crew and cast and all that. Like, you don't have to do as much. But what you find out is when we had regular TV, you know, a lot of them would be filmed as the seasons were being, like, the, the shows would be shot while the seasons were being released. The writers could adapt to what they were hearing from the audiences. If a character, like a standing character or a side character kind of popped up and people were like, oh, this is... We like this character. You could bring more of that character in. Now, the entire seasons are done before they're even released, and there's no way to adapt. And even shows that do have a chance to adapt, like um, Rings of Power, does not adapt. And here you have, they just don't know how to change trajectories. They, hear, they say, we heard you. We heard you didn't like the first season. We're going to change things. And then they do nothing. Uh, but... I'm going to tie this into a review with Twilight of the Gods and just tie a couple things together. So let's take a look at some articles. Hollywood finally admits cable TV is dying. What happens next? I think we all knew this. When was the last time anybody watched anything on cable TV that was not sports related? It's really difficult to even want to watch anything, especially when you have sites like Hulu that literally play the show the night after. So as I'm reviewing the... Uh, Aaron Hernandez story, which is on FX, it's showing up on Hulu the next night, which I can review. I don't need to deviate. Like, DVRs were a big deal. Now, people don't even... Most people are cord cutters, right? It, 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 it costs less money. But what you have is this kind of weird decline of TV where, you know, you only have large, old reruns like The Big Bang Theory and Friends, but then a lot of those are also propping up some of the streaming services people are going back to watch things that are old that they just they don't want to invest in something new why don't they want to invest in stuff that's new because they all the new stuff not all of it but an awful lot of it gets canceled right what did netflix become a home of all the canceled shows where they would run them for like one more season just so that they could get the, that fan base to go back and watch all the rest of the old episodes so they could get more watch time from you and make sure that they retained you as a as a fan of the show. They're like, well, guess what we did? We gave you one more season, so why don't you watch the whole thing again and then watch it with the new season? We promise it'll be great. But now you just have this like vast, sprawling network of just half-assed streaming networks and things. So here's what kind of an example of something that pisses me off. Right, really grind my gears is uh, Twilight of the Gods. Now, I'm going to say a couple things about this. This is a Zack Snyder project. I think he produced it. I know he directed at least one episode, and it's all about Norse mythology. Sigrid, an iron-willed warrior, saves Leif, a mortal king, who falls in love with her. They both survive Thor's wrath, wrath of terror. Uh, which embarks them on a, a crew of crusaders on a merciless mission for vengeance against all odds. And here I'm looking at it, and it's like, oh, this might be a great one-off anime. It's, it's going to be about Ragnarok and all the interesting... It's got a lot of interesting stuff about Norse mythology, and I thought it was very intriguing take. It's kind of got a Samurai Jack-type anime style. And I thought it was really good. I enjoyed it. I've never seen... 
full on penetration in a animated show before. Not since I watched some sort of Japanese anime, not in a Western show. So that was a little off putting. I mean, there's a lot of nudity in this, folks, and there's your trademark Zack Snyder violence. But this was actually not bad. 79% audience score. Yeah, it, it dragged in a couple spots. Uh, but 79% is fine. C plus, B minus. I'm right in that range. I'm a, I would recommend it. If you like anime, you like uh, Norse mythology, this is definitely an interesting take on it, right? But what annoys me, and this isn't much of a spoiler, a little bit of a spoiler, but they're baiting you for season two. And I'm like, there's no guarantee of season two. And this is where part of the problem starts. Is no one will even give this a shot if they hear there's a possible season two. Especially if it gets canceled in like a week. It spent maybe a week in the top ten on Netflix from what I saw. Maybe two weeks. I don't think it got any higher than six. Maybe I saw it around eight. I doubt this is going to get picked up. Especially with Zack Snyder's track record. All of his stuff is bombing, right? He, he released Rebel Moon. Why he released those terrible theatrical cuts instead of the uncuts, which were substantially better, I have no idea. Are you trying to discourage fans from watching this stuff? So then, same thing with Rebel Moon. You set it up for a multi-multi-trilogy and uh, you know quadrilogy or whatever you want to do. Plus, you potentially have animated add-ins into this, and it's all gone. Same thing with your your Land of the Dead or whatever that you know whatever his his thing with the dead was. All that's gone. Uh, they're, they're not going to expand that universe. Uh, Army of the Dead and the whole thing with the uh, the there was a whole there was a spinoff with guys robbing things. I forget what that was called. So let's just take it let's take it b back one step. So Zack Snyder several years ago, this is from 2021. This article, he signs a first look film deal with Netflix. This is before Rebel Moon comes out, right? So he he gets this big giant deal, right? Nobody knows how much it is. At least I couldn't find any anything on it. it. There could be more. It could be less than the other case we're going to look at, which is Ryan Murphy. Let's just say they shot him $200 million for all this. Uh, so he does Army of the Dead. Then he, here's the, the, the German-made one, Army of Thieves, which is a prequel, which I saw that as well. All pretty mediocre. His wife's in there. She's a, she's a producer. And then... You know, Army of the Dead does okay. Then they sign the Rebel Moon thing. Rebel Moon's a total disaster. Absolute people make fun of it. I make fun of it. I watched all of it, but then I, you know, just not execu executed so poorly. And then, but you threw away all this money on this guy. And now he's got all these floating IPs out there that are literally going to do nothing. We're never going to see any resolution in Rebel Moon. At least I doubt it. Army of Thieves is dead. So, or and, and so is uh, Army of uh, of the Dead. That's that's done. So you're never going to know what happened with those stories. So why even invest in it? Now here's the opposite of that, and this is where, and I can't believe I'm giving Ryan Murphy credit. Ryan Murphy, who you may know from such things as Glee, you may know him from. Uh, he he did American Crime Story with Cuba Gooding Jr., which was the OJ trial. What else has he done? American Horror Story. He's known for all these things. What's interesting about this this guy is he started doing these anthologies. So he's got two in the back now, and I've reviewed both of them. He did Monster the Dahmer Story, and he did Monsters um, the Menendez Brothers, Lyle and Eric Menendez. Both were highly controversial, brought a lot of, of eyes on a Netflix. People are wondering, why is this so controversial? Again, I've reviewed both. They're not very controversial. But if you're a dummy and you are offended easily, yes, it might be controversial. But what they're saying is that Ryan Murphy's Netflix originals have generated $341 million in revenue for the streamer globally. Is that enough to justify his $300 million contract? This is from 2023. This is before Dahmer came out. This is before, because he had a five-year contract with them. So, and his first stuff didn't do that great. I don't think I never heard, I never watched the the politician. I tried to watch The Watcher. I didn't think that was very good, but I thought Dahmer was excellent. I thought um, the other show was excellent as well. Uh, the 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 monsters one and. I think that was just him getting getting a feel for it.
But those have really paid off. Those are pretty huge, and I think they're pushing him, you know, uh, pushing it even further. And what's interesting is that a lot of those shows are just they're limited releases. They're very focused. You're not worried about a second season. I'm not gonna looking for a second season of Dahmer. I'm not looking for a second season of the Menendez brothers. But what he seems to have mastered is that form of television where it's very contained. You're not what you know, he could go do another project and maybe it's controversial, maybe it's not. But he still accomplished what he set out to do versus Zack Slater and all this world building. Reminds me a little bit of the J.J. Abrams deal that was signed with Max, which I think was like a $200 million deal, where they were working on uh, Archimandis or some crazy thing that they just ca- completely killed. Because his reputation is dirt right now. But my point is, streaming, There's this. they haven't quite found what they're trying to do here. You know, you, you talk about Game of Thrones, right? which was on Max, HBO, whatever, goes for eight seasons. They have the creator of Game of Thrones begging them to do 10 because the original showrunners, D.B. Uh, Benahoff and Weiss, went out of their contract because they signed, I guess, not as lucrative of a contract as they could have gotten from Netflix, which they ended up botching anyway. So these guys are fishing for a contract, so they're trying to get out of their Game of Thrones contract so bad that they're willing to tank the last three seasons of Game of Thrones just to get out of it. So instead of having a 10 season run, you have an eight, which creates season eight of Game of Thrones, which is widely considered the worst conclusion to any series ever made ever. And that's where you get this die off of content that just isn't quality anymore. The the showrunners don't care because they want to, they see these big fat contracts that they're not getting paid on. So I can see why a lot of people are all saying that it sucks. So I wanted to tie all this together, really get your guys' thoughts about this. I wanted to talk about it more. I wanted to see where everybody sat on this. I'm on the side of if you hire the right talent, and I cannot believe I'm saying Ryan Murphy is extremely talented, but I think he's proven it, right? American Horror Story, though, you could see where it started off pretty good, and then it started to die off because you could sense his interest died off in it. Same with, I think that's with Aaron Hernandez, which is very good, going on FX right now. It's an American crime story, I think. Aaron Hernandez. Very good, well acted, well directed. It's I think it's doing pretty good. You know, I, I think it's pretty good. So I think that's where you get the difference. And and they let these these creators kind of off the leash where they could create their own content with their own crew. Some of the directors who worked on the Monsters show for Ryan Murphy are the same guys who are working on the American Crime story. So he has his little crew together. Clearly, Zack Snyder has no one telling him what to do. Because he's just making absolute slop right now. Uh, I don't understand. Stick with anime, dude. Because so far, that's the only thing you've proven that you could do that was even passably functional in the past five years. Just leave out the penetration, please. I I don't need to see that. That's just unnecessary. Uh, I'm okay. Cartoon nudity, I'm not even that okay with that. Um, But damn, son. Damn. Just leave it alone. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Did you watch Twilight of the Gods? Will you give it a chance? I I would recommend it, but since they baited me, I almost can't because I don't know if they're ever going to resolve it. So let me know what you think. I'm highly agitated. I hope you're not. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you guys so much for paying attention to this and listening. If you like what you heard, we could really use the subscribe. You can use the thumbs up. You know, you know, it's the thing you need to do. We need the help. You need to do it. You can support the channel too. Love all y'all. But I am on to the next one. Thanks for catching the video. Be sure to join our channel to get the education you deserve. Make sure you check out our shorts, live streams, and catch us on all the socials. Don't forget to like and subscribe.